Marcia and I have a friend who's named Jack. Jack was a, a handyman, did a lot of painting, and while we were in Colorado, he came and began painting on some of the parsonage, and Jack and I became friends. And we, and we visited very often. Uh, we, we shared a love for guitars. I loved them for a long time and learned a lot about them and don't have even the slightest hint of musical ability. But I like them. And so Jack and I would visit about them, and in the course of that, one day Jack mentioned to me that he played the guitar. So we kept visiting. I said, Jackie, you know, you ought, you ought to play in church. I mean, that, no, no, I mean, I, don't, I just pick at it. I'm not very good. And I said, no, that's okay. You know, people will understand, and you can do it. And that went on and on and on. And finally, one day Jack said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. So on a Sunday evening, Jack was at church, and he came to the front, and he sat up, and he had his amplifier there, and he reached in, he took out a classical guitar, and everybody was kind of watching, you know, wondering, oh, what's going to happen now? And in a moment, Jack began to play, and, and suddenly everything stopped. Jack began to play the most beautiful hymns you've ever heard in your life, just one after another. And people just sat there enthralled by what they were hearing and, and this worship that was taking place. You see, Jack, Jack had a gift. Now understand this, Jack had an ability as well, but, but God looked at Jack and he looked at that ability and he laid claim to it. And he said, I'm going to use this in Jack's life for the common good of the church and to bring glory to myself. And, and he did. And Jack and I went to Oklahoma and I led a revival and Jack played and we roomed together and just got to be good friends and and then sadly, one day, Jack had a stroke, and he could no longer talk, and he could no longer play. But I know that his heart and, and mine are filled with those times when God used his gift in a wonderful way to touch a lot of lives and to bring himself glory. And, and I share that with you today to move back to this topic of spiritual gifts that we've been sharing about for the past two weeks and specifically how every believer has been given a spiritual gift. What we've shared from Scripture is that God says that I place through the Holy Spirit in every one of my children a spiritual gift which is to be used for the common good which will bring him glory. How those gifts are, are given and no gift is more important than another. And we've shared about that, and then we move to specific spiritual gifts that are lifted, listed in Scripture. And we looked at, at what the definition, the description of a spiritual gift was, and this is what we shared. The spiritual gifts can be defined and described as special abilities distributed by the Holy Spirit to every believer for the common good of the body of Christ, the church. Now, as we did that last week, we said, let's look at some specific gifts that are listed in Scripture. And there are three primary places in Romans 12, Ephesians 4, and 1 Corinthians 12. We walked through each one of those last week. From Romans 12, we saw these gifts. Prophecy, ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, and mercy. From Ephesians 4, we saw apostleship, prophecy, evangelism, pastoring, and teaching. And from 1 Corinthians 12, we saw wisdom and knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. And importantly, what we shared was that we began to discover that spiritual gift through submission and obedience to the Holy Spirit who placed it within us. And as I look back and I said, okay, we've looked at spiritual gifts in general and we've looked specifically at these spiritual gifts that are listed in Scripture, what, what do we do now? I mean, do we stop at two and everybody leave and we say, well, I know what this one is, I know what that one is, I know in the Bible even where it talks about them. And the answer to that is no, we can't do that. Because you see, a spiritual gift is of no worth if we don't use it. If it sits dormant, it becomes stagnant. It's not being used in the way that God intended. Now listen carefully, folks. Here's the reality. Failing to use your spiritual gift is disobedience to God. And so I, I wonder, what can we do now? 
What, what can I share to stress both the importance of spiritual gifts and using the spiritual gift that God has placed in every single believer that sits here today? And to stress the importance that God had placed on spiritual gifts, I want to go back to a passage and look again. And that's 1 Corinthians 12. So if you'll turn your Bibles there, I'm going to, I'm going to read a passage. And I, and I want you to listen carefully to what God says in, in these words. Because they tell us how important spiritual gifts are to God and how important each and every spiritual gift is to the body of believers. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to begin reading at verse 12. We find this, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and I have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, Because I'm not of a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, Because I'm not and I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it, or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. So let's stop there. God tells us in, in short form, that I put you in this body. And when I put you in this body, through the Holy Spirit, I gave you a specific spiritual gift for that body and for the common good of the church and as that is exercised and put into place and displayed glory will be brought to me so having shared about spiritual gifts and noting the importance of spiritual gifts my question became became how can the existence of spiritual gifts within this body best be illustrated so that we come to understand that everything that God has said here that we've been sharing is taking place right here. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll show you. But take, for example, the, the gift of exhortation. We know it also as encouragement. And it's the divine enablement of present truth so as to strengthen, comfort, or urge to action those who are discouraged or wavering in their faith or generally need encouragement. So we say, do we have any of those in this body? Hi, my name is Steve Tompkins. My spiritual gift is encouragement. And the way I use that gift in the church is by helping people along with their walk with Christ. On Thursday mornings, there's a men's prayer group that I'm a part of. And we get together and we talk about the issues of life. We talk about uh, the struggles that we're facing with sin. Uh, adversity that we're facing or, or we might just need direction or or uh, guidance in a situation I, I go to the Bible and uh, as uh, as we talk about these issues I go to the Word of God and God just lays these scriptures on my heart sometimes and I'll share them with the group and uh, uh, it's it's been told to me several times how encouraging that is how much uh, hope and and uh, courage that it gave that person to continue on uh, with the struggle that, that they're having. So everyone needs an encourager in their lives. Uh, and I've been blessed to have been able to encourage everyone from pastors to, to people who don't go to church. 
So that's the gift that God has graced me with, and uh, I'm glad to share it with others. Now what about administration? That's another spiritual gift, and it's the divine enablement to understand what makes an organization function and the special ability to plan and execute procedures that accomplish the goals of the ministry. It's a necessary gift that benefits the whole body. I'm Tyler Smith, and I have the spiritual gift of administration. Uh, I'm the chairman of the stewardship committee. I help use uh, my gift to uh, set the budget for the upcoming church year. Uh, and also, I guess with that, um, one of the biggest lessons I've learned uh, with having that position is to uh, let others kind of have the, the forefront in, in certain situations. Uh, a lot of times we'll have, uh, during our committee meetings, we'll have you know, things where you know, maybe somebody with more experience in law uh, would be better suited to answer a specific question. Uh, somebody with computers would be better suited to answer a specific question. Um, and I guess also uh, I use it in work. Uh, what I do with work, I'm a contract coordinator and uh, I'm basically the uh, kind of the, the go-between between, between uh, our spray crews, uh, my boss, and uh, our customers. Uh, I have to have a lot of uh, attention to detail um, and I also uh, have to have you know, good people skills and to make sure that you know, we have the job done efficiently uh, and, uh, and as effectively as we can. Now, all believers are called to intercessory prayer, but there's a spiritual gift that is called intercession. And it is a divine enablement to consistently pray on behalf of and for others, seeing frequent and specific results. We often call them prayer warriors. Hi, I'm Beth McDonald, and I was asked to pray about my spiritual gift, which I believe is intercessory prayer, the gift of intercessory. Um, for a long time I have had a um, great desire to pray for people that are weak, down and out, um, troubled, sick, and um, it's overwhelming uh, what I feel in my heart. And I know that it comes from the Spirit of God. and. Um, I get in my room and I um, shut the door and I talk to God and sometimes it is just my begging. I'm a beggar. I call myself a beggar, but I plead on behalf of those people or those events or those things that God has burdened my heart with. But when you are in the presence of the manifested uh, power of God, through the Holy Spirit, it is a wonderful time in His presence. When you are doing the gift that God gives you, um, it is um, the greatest joy you'll have because um, it is for His glory. And I have a scripture to give you that says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19, it says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, and do not quench the spirit. So if you have a desire, an earnest, fervent desire in your heart to pray for someone, get alone, pray, and let God and the Holy Spirit guide your prayer, and He will work miracles through it, because He worked through His people for His glory. Another spiritual gift is mercy, which is the divine enablement to cheerfully and practically help those who are suffering or are in need, having compassion that is moved to action. And Addie has that gift. My name is Addie Welch, and my gift is a gift of mercy. That gift has been given to me through a series of events in my life. Um, God has taken and turned all these around, and he's used them for my good. Um, things that have prepared me to feel, really feel the true, honest, and heartfelt um, mercy and compassion for others. Because of God's allowing things to happen to me, Scripture has stayed with me um, in Psalms 30, verses 11 and 12. You turn my wailing into dancing, 
you removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy um, so that my heart will sing to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Um, it is because of this that I am always ready to tell my story, and I have. As leader of two grief groups uh, at First Baptist Blanchard, I have been able to share the darkest time of my life with others and at the same time actually know when they shared with me what they were saying and how they were feeling. All of our past hurts are given to us as gifts from God so that we can honestly share them with others. When we say to someone, I understand your pain, you really understand their pain. And um, it's because of this gift of mercy that um, I am able to say that. My name. We all uh, have the Great Commission before us as followers of Jesus Christ, but God has gifted certain ones with the gift of evangelism. It is a divine enablement to effectively communicate the gospel to unbelievers so they respond in faith and move toward discipleship. Hi, I'm Paul Hayes. I think it's an awesome thing to be studying the scripture to discover uh, in an understanding of our spiritual gifts. Uh, it, it clearly states in scripture that God has blessed us in every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus is what the word says. And I'd like to share with you one of those that he's blessed me with and that's the gift of evangelism. Uh, it's simply put for me, it's sharing the truth, which is a person, the person of Jesus, with others. It's not always preaching, even though Jesus did preach to multitudes many times. He went out of his way just to find that woman. And that's what I like to do. Uh, everywhere you go, there's always going to be somebody that needs to hear the good news. Thank you. Faith is a foundation of our relationship with God. It's also a spiritual gift that's defined as the divine enablement to act on God's promises with confidence and unwavering belief in God's ability to fulfill his purposes. Hi, my name is Madison. Ever since I gave my life over to Jesus, um, he's been drawing me closer to himself and revealing to me his plan for my life. Um, one way that he's really done that is by giving me just an abundance of faith in him and continually refilling that faith and reassuring me um, that I can trust in him. Um, he's burdened my heart for, you know, the lost people of the world who just haven't had a chance or opportunity to hear the gospel. And in going to some of the most dark places around the world, I just, um, I've learned how important it is to realize that God is powerful and He is the only one who can, who can do these things and change hearts and bring light to the dark places. And above all else, we, we can't forget who we're placing our faith in. And when our faith falters or we feel like we can't trust um, in the Lord, just remember He has fulfilled every promise that He has made to us. And we have a book full of these promises to rely on and to go back and to, to look through. Um, I want to challenge you as, you know, I've prayed and I've asked God to um, strengthen my faith. Um, I want to challenge you as you do that in your own life that you have to be prepared that when He does strengthen your faith, you have to step out onto those waves and into that storm that it's so hard to step out into sometimes. Around us is a spiritual gift of helps, which is the divine enablement to attach spiritual value to the accomplishment of practical and necessary tasks that free up, support, and meet the needs of others. Hi, I'm Jason. Uh, one of my spiritual gifts is helps. Um, use that gift usually as a behind the scenes type of person to, to help ministers uh, uh, perform certain tasks that frees them up so that they can concentrate on a uh, more serious task. Uh, I think it entails a lot of helping other folks uh, di during uh, difficult times in our lives uh, where uh, we may see that their yard needs to be mowed while they're sick or uh, going out and, and working in different ministries such as the chain, chainsaw ministry, um, just helping in, in, in just a, 
various ways uh, up here, upkeeping the property, working on different things here at the church itself. Um, you know, God has gifted us with uh, uh, a lot of different spiritual gifts, and we're to use those to build the body up. And uh, uh, I encourage you that if you haven't figured out what that is, that you would pray and ask the Lord's guidance uh, and direction uh, that he would reveal that to you so that you can also use that gift to uh, uh, use here. Ministry is a spiritual gift. We sometimes refer to it as service as well, and it's the divine enablement to see and meet needs of people and the church as it fulfills the Great Commission. Good morning, church family. My name is Sissy Merriman, and today I'm asked to tell you how the Holy Spirit has led me to use my spiritual gift. In Galatians 5.13, it says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And my spiritual gift is service. Uh, for five years, I've worked with Project Linus. We make handmade baby blankets for children from preemies to 18 years old. And in five years, we have sent out almost 5,000 blankets. We send them to hospitals, to homeless shelters, to, uh, we've sent blankets to children where there were shootings in their high schools to hopefully bring them some comfort. And on each blanket, we use, put a card that has the plan of salvation on it and a phone number in case someone needs prayer. I also get the honor every year of working with Melvin Moses on the church auction to earn money for missions. And at Christmas, I help organize and help decorate the church for the holidays. Um, our body is not complete without each one of you using the gift that God has given you. So my prayer for each of you is that you find your spiritual gift and you look around and see where God is working and you join him there. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sam Paris, and God has given me the gift of an apostle, or as some call it, the gift of a missionary. After 25 years of missionary work in Venezuela, uh, where we saw God uh, bless in so many ways, including the planting of dozens of churches in towns and villages that didn't have an evangelical church before. We also had the privilege of training and preparing Venezuelan pastors and missionaries to continue the work in Venezuela. My name's Melvin Moses, and I'm a greeter at First Baptist Blanchard Church. Uh, I want to talk about the gift of hospitality that I've been blessed with. Uh, I get to be the first person that people have spent a whole week out there in this negative world, and they get to come in and the first person they see, I'm going to have a smile on my face. And I've always found out if you smile at people, they will smile back. It sets the tone. And I'm really excited to, that God has given me the opportunity to do that. Uh, we're, we're so blessed to, to be at the front door. We as Christians need to make everyone feel like someone. Hospitality is a special gift, and I love sharing it with other people. Hi, I'm Amy Robinson, and my spiritual gift is teaching. I teach Sunday school to four- and five-year-olds. I do Sunday night Bible study, and Wednesdays I do child care. I'm not the only one that has this gift, and I hope you will join us too to teach these babies about Jesus. What is important is that we find them and that we use them. God, on the one hand, can say none are more important than the other. He also says all are equally important to me. So much so that the Holy Spirit, God himself, would place within us that gift. 
And so what do we take from this? What do we do? Do we go out and say, oh, you know what? So-and-so's got this spiritual gift. Well, we can say we're glad you do. But more importantly, we have to look at what we have and what God's called us to do and what God has given to us. So here it is. If you don't know your spiritual gift, you need to seek it and find it and use it. If you know your spiritual gift and it's not in use, you need to use it. And you say, okay, we've talked about this. What do I do now? Well, let me give you one option. In the foyer, when you go out, are a lot of these cards. And it simply has a place for your name and your phone number. And on it, it says, I want to discover my spiritual gift. I want to use my spiritual gift. You fill out one of these and put your name, I or somebody, Sam is our equipping pastor, somebody's going to contact you and ask, what can we do to help you? And it may be to provide a ministry gift inventory. It may be to pray with you. It may be to talk specifically about what's your passion, what do you feel led to do? And in turn, as you discover that, to plug you into a place of service in this church so that God will be glorified. And understand this, as we do that, whether it's this piece of paper or whether it's this minister gift inventory, whatever it is, it is the Holy Spirit that originates that and guides that and not any of us. Now, at the end of three sermons about spiritual gifts, I want to leave with you two verses. And what I want you to take from this today, more important than anything else, is what we read in these two verses. Get your Bible. Turn to the book of 1 Peter. The fourth chapter, 1 Peter. Listen carefully to what God says. Verses 10 and 11. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Understand this. God says, I have placed a gift in you as a steward. That means you are holding it in care for God, which means we are accountable to God for what we do with that which he has placed within us. Now, I want one other thing. The last word of verse 11. Amen. It's not there to end a prayer. It is there because here's what amen means. So be it. Understand? When we read this, God says, I placed a gift in you. Use it to bring glory to me. So be it. Let's pray for our invitation.